Cheryl, two remarkable yeah. young women. Amazing. You know, you think if, you know, losing a parent, how traumatic that is for kids, and then seeing them, some of them, you know, killed right in front of your eyes, and losing them by people who murdered them. Um, for your faith, you think that they might be bitter or timid yeah. or afraid of dying or yeah. any of those things. And it's had the reverse effect. These girls are on fire and they want to go back to the country, yeah. that to the very people who murdered their parents and they want to win them for God. Mm -hmm. They want to win their nation for God. They want to, they like, they have this fire in them. They want mm -hmm. to be nation winners. And they just blew me away. What astounds me about the persecuted church, which is so different from North America, I'll say it, Mm -hmm. is that they sit in the suffering. They know trouble and trials will come, but they say that leads us closer to God and it, it brings a, a different kind of relationship mm -hmm. than even myself where we tend to run away from suffering. We don't mm -hmm. want to mm -hmm. be in pain or hurt. And the persecuted church reminds us that there is something beautiful and intimate and connected with Christ when you suffer. Well, I did an interview with Paul Johnson with Open Doors mm -hmm. uh, just recently for, for the, this week of remembering this persecuted church around the world. And one thing that he said that I think really hit me was these people realize there's a value in following Jesus yeah. that mm -hmm. I don't think we realize the value. Mm -hmm. And that's the only explanation I can give to a girl like that who has lost everything. And she sees a value, for, like she's not looking at what she doesn't have. She's actually yeah. seeing mm -hmm. the value of what she has and the value of her living testimony, right? You know, mm -hmm. that she has now this, this fire in her, like you said, Cheryl, mm -hmm. to go back to Nepal and preach. You know, it's been said that you'll never know that Jesus is all you need until Jesus is all you have. And these little girls have lived through such horrendous conditions and come through it with such depth. I mean, I think it was Oswald Chambers that said, suffering washes away a great deal of spiritual shallowness. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's, that's a good great. one. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> and you know, it's really, that's really where the depth comes is when you go yeah. through those deep valleys. And you know, um, Glenn Penner, who was in that piece, you know, he, uh, was facing cancer as you can see he, he had lost his hair there from chemotherapy and you know he had been inspired by girls like that that he had met and he had said as I'm facing cancer like my suffering is nothing you know compared to the the joy that these girls face mm -hmm. it with and it strengthened him so much you know he he did pass away just over a year ago and uh, but he lived every day of his life serving the persecuted church being passionate about that mm -hmm. cause and trying to just you know um, find God in a fresh new way mm -hmm. and and still um, live out his faith even in the midst of facing you know the C word this, this you know a very scary thing in our culture and he talked exactly what you said how we run from pain here we run from suffering mm -hmm. but how the persecuted church embraces it and knows that it's just going to take them deeper yeah. with God and we need to be reminded especially for the weekend to pray for the persecuted mm -hmm. church they are our brothers and sisters they may not be here on the couch with mm -hmm. us but they are our sisters and brothers, and mm -hmm. we need to remember to pray for them. Yeah, and they're not asking for their suffering to go away. That's no, another thing that always emerges. That. They're not mm -hmm. saying, oh, you know, you know, just, uh, they're not actually praying for justice. They're praying for grace, and they're mm -hmm. praying that they can actually withstand what they're encountering and demonstrate Jesus. Yeah, I and just, also, I, but it also is, she's like, I, I look at the people who killed my father, and it's like, they need God's love. Yeah. Now, it's not like the, where I tend to be like, oh no, they're gonna get it. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, we're they gotta you know, come they're gonna, yeah, they gotta come yeah. It's like, yeah. no, no, pray that I would then love them the way Christ yeah. loves me, and Christ loves them. And mm -hmm. I'm like, Wow, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's something I, we can all learn from them. Yeah. So just if, if uh, your church or you want to pray for the persecuted church, you can go to www.idop.ca, International Day of Prayer. Mm -hmm. and uh, they have all kinds of resources and information for churches mm -hmm. and you know it's just one day a year that we can mm -hmm. stand with solidarity and remember them mm -hmm. and I can tell you from meeting them it means the world to think that we would remember pray for them and stand with them. And mm -hmm. even not just church families but your own family Bring your kids around, your family around, and say, we're going to spend some time praying for our brothers and sisters around the world who don't enjoy the freedoms, the religious freedoms that we do here in North America.